Okay, so we've been looking at fair decision making and we looked at one divider and other choosers. We looked at the lone chooser and multiple dividers. Now we're gonna look at a method of sealed bids. So sealed bids are usually used when you, well, they are used when you have assets that you can't divide. And so what's gonna happen is that the players are going to privately put down an amount that they believe each thing that is being divided is worth. So once they've done that, all players have done that, then they come back together and they reveal everybody's bid. Once they do that, they look at each asset, whoever placed the highest bid on that asset gets it. And then they decide how to break it down so everyone is, gets their fair share or at least a fair share. Okay, so that's kind of um, what we're doing. So when you're doing this, um, there's a couple things that need to happen. Um, usually or you, the people playing have to have a large sum amount of money that they have, can access um, because they're gonna have to pay out other people if they, they won the bids and they get more than their fair share. Um, the other thing is, or the other thing I wanted to explain is this is usually done um, maybe like for a divorce or uh, a settlement where a business is, is closing and maybe they want to break up assets between business par partners. So those are some examples. Okay. So I'm just going to write down the process. Okay, so again, as I mentioned, each player separately puts down what they value. Let me just move. Okay, so you guys want to mute your because there's some feedback. I don't know who's has it open. Okay. Okay, so each player <laughs> separately. Puts down what they value. Each item. Okay, so once that's done, each bid is collected. For each party, the value of each item is totaled and it's divided by the number in the party. So we can figure out what the fair division for each player is. Okay. So bids are collected. We're gonna sum each player's items. We're gonna take that sum or take their sum of the value of items. and divide by the number of players. This is considered their fair share. of the assets. Okay, so once you've done that, we figured out what everybody's fair share is um, that is playing and we look at the bids. We give each item to the highest bidder.
Okay, so once you've looked at who gets what item, then we need to look at what each player received with that those assets. And with that, did they get their fair share or not? If they did get their fair share, and maybe they got more than their fair share with the items they got, they're gonna have to take the money um, that is over their fair share and put it into a, a pot that they're gonna divide later or allocate things that would help pay off other players if they're, they didn't get anything, then they need some money to, to give them a fair share. Okay, so putting that into words. Okay, so um, each player, so once you um, give each item to the highest bidder, again, so each player, sum the assets. And I'm just curious. Hello. I'm not knowing, I'm not sure how to spell assets and it doesn't look right. I don't know. Okay, anyway, so each player sums um, their assets. And we'll pay. a pot um, with the amount that exceeds. I don't know how to spell that either. They're fair sure. Any player not getting their fair share any player who did not receive their fair share it paid out. by, let's call it the holding pot. Okay, so once you split up the assets, you figured out if they got their fair share or not, if they got over their fair share, they had to pay the, the um, excess into this holding pot. If they didn't get any assets or if they got assets that did not um, get up to a fair share, then that holding pot paid them off to that value of their fair share. So a lot of times there's excess in this holding pot every, after everybody gets their fair share. And so from there, you can decide what you're going to do with this excess of material. Um, actually, you would just divide that amount with the players. So you're going to divide any extra money in the holding pot. Among all the players. Okay, so let's look at an example. Okay, so your dear Aunt Sally, um, she's known for, um, gosh, now I can't even think. <laughs> Anyways, we'll talk about that in a second. Your dear Aunt Sally left three items to her um, three nieces. Or I guess if you're not a niece, a nephew. Anyways, um, she leaves her house, car, and a diamond ring to them.
three items. to three relatives. Your dear Aunt Sally, she's known um, for order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, order it appears left to right, then addition and subtraction. That's what she's known for. Anyway, she's Poor dear Aunt Sally passed away and she's leaving three of these items. One of them, you're one of the players and we have a house, we have a car and we have a ring. And we have three players. So each three players on a piece of paper without the other ones knowing, put down the value of the house they believe it is. They put down the value they believe the car is and separately they put down what they believe the value of the ring is. And so once that's done, we get the following. And this is in terms of thousands of dollars. So the house for player one that's worth 150,000. For player two, this is worth 170,000. And for player three, they believe it's worth 125,000. So looking at that, the person with the highest bid is the one that's going to get it. And so player two gets this item. So right now we know that player two gets the house. And so now looking at what they believe the car costs, um, Player one believes the car costs 6,000, player two believes the car costs 8,000, and player three believes the car costs 10,000. And so looking at this, we're looking at the highest bid. So player three gives the highest bid, and so they're gonna get the car. And so for the ring, player one, believes it's worth $3,000, player two values it at 5,000, and player three values it at 3,000. So the highest bidder, again, is player two, and so they also get the ring. So we wanna figure out what amount is the fair division for each player given the value of each asset. So let's look at the total. So totaling all of those up, so we have 150,000 for player one plus 6,000, that's 156,000 plus um, 3,000. So this is 159,000. If we summed up the value of everything for player two, well, that's 170 plus eight, 178. 178 plus five is 183, so 183,000. Summing up all the assets for player three, the value is 125 plus 10 is 135, 135 plus three, so that's 138. But we wanna figure out what's the fair share for each player. Well, there's three players, so you're going to take what the total value of everything is for one player and divide it by three. And that's what they believe a fair share would be.
And so 159,000 divided by three, that is going to give you 53,000. If I look at 183,000 divided by three, well, three goes into 18 six times, three goes into three one times, so that would give me 61,000. And then 138,000, I'm dividing that by three, well, three goes into 13 four times, that's 12, and three goes into 12, I'm sorry, 18 six times, so 46,000. Okay, so we now need to sum what they got. And so player one, they didn't receive anything. Um, so they didn't win any of the bids, but they need to get their fair share. And so they're going to be paid out um, 53000 Player two, well, they got the house and they got the ring. So the house they believed was 170,000 plus the ring they believed was 5,000. This is 175,000. But their fair share is only 61,000. So we need to um, figure out how much player two owes the holding pot. So 175,000 minus the 61,000, which they should have gotten in order to get a fair share. So that would give us 114,000. So they owe the holding pot $114,000. Okay, so now that pot has that $114,000. They can take it and play, pay player one um, out of that. So now let's look at player three, make sure they get a fair share. Well, they got the car. The car is equal to, to according to them, is $10,000. Their fair share though, That was 46,000. And so they didn't get their fair share. They only got the car, which is worth 10,000 to them. And so they need to be paid What did I say? They need to be paid $36,000 from the holding pot. Okay, but after each player is paid out from the um, holding pot to get them up to their fair share. 
you'll see that there's an excess of money left in the holding pot. And so they're gonna take that and they're gonna subdivide it in between them. Okay, so let's look at the holding pot. Well, player two had to pay into the holding pot, which was 114,000. Minus what they paid out to the other players. So the holding pot had to pay out 53,000. I'm just gonna inside the parentheses sum what they had paid out plus the 36,000. Dear Aunt Sally would be pr proud that you're doing order of operations. So work in your parentheses first. 53,000 plus 36,000, this gives us 89,000. So 114,000 minus 89,000. That's gonna give us 25,000. So we're gonna take that $25,000 and we're gonna split it up among all three players. And so if we look at that, looking at three goes into $25,000. Well, that goes in eight times. Three goes into 10, three times. Three goes into 10, three times. Three goes into 10, three times. So from this, each player gets So if they ask you, um, looking at each player, in the end, what did they receive? So for player one, well, they got that 53,000, but they also got $8,333.33. Oops, darn it. So the total payout, so for player one, they got 61,333 dollars. Player two, they got the car plus they got 36,000 plus the $8,333.33. So they got the car plus $44,333.33. Player three, They, oops, that was player three, sorry guys. I'm skipped out on player two, they got everything. Or they didn't get everything. That was player three. Player two, 
They got the house and the the ring, right? So they walked away with a house, a ring, and they had to pay out. Well, it wasn't really 114,000. They put that in the holding pot, but they got back $8,333.33. So we have that 114,000 minus what they got back from the excess in the holding pot. So they technically really had to pay out $105,600 and 67 cents. So questions on that? Okay, so I have a couple more examples that we can do that are kind of, I mean, it's the same process. Okay, let me give you the other information. Make this bigger just so I, yeah. Okay, so um, Erica and Megan were roommates for three years and they brought many items together. Megan decides to move back to Pennsylvania and they have to split up the items that they had purchased together as they were roommates. And so the following items are what they, they bought together and they need to split up. And so we have following items are a TV, there's a stereo system, a couch, and their pet cat. So they decide they're gonna do the seal bid method on how they're gonna divide these, uh, these um, their property. So Megan puts down that the TV is worth $150 to her. In Erica's bid, she believed it was only worth $100. So from that, we can see that Megan is the winner of the bid, highest, and so she's gonna go home with the TV. Okay, so the stereo system, Megan believes it's worth $200 and Erica believes it's worth $250. So by this, Erica's walking away with a stereo system and they leave it's $250. For the couch, she believes, Megan believes it's $250 and Erica only values it at $150. So Megan's also going to get the couch.
and for their dear beloved pet. Megan only values it as $50 and Erica $100. So Erica walks away with a cat. You put 200 on Megan on Megan on the couch when it's 250. The couch, uh, thank you. Yeah. This couch was worth 250, not 200. Okay, so we have to look at what amount each player believes is their fair share. And so we have to total up the, their assets for each item and then divide by, there's just two people splitting, so divide by two. And so their total We're going down the column, 150 plus 200, that's 350. 350 plus, I'm gonna combine that as 300, that's 650. So for Erica, I'm gonna actually combine 150 plus 250 first, that's 400. 400 plus 100 plus 100, that's 600. So their fair share well six fifty divided by two that is three twenty five and Erica's fair share six hundred divided by two that's three hundred. Okay, so we need to see. What they got. So Megan, um, she has 150 plus 250. So the amount that she got is three, um, $400. And so she got more than her fair share. So she needs to pay the holding pot. And 325, so 400 minus 325, she owes the holding pot $75. Erica though, she got the the stereo, which was 250 plus the cat, which was worth 100 to her. So that's $350. Well, she also got more than her fair share. So 350 minus 300, she's going to pay. $50 into the holding pot. Can you scroll it up, please? Yeah. Thank you. Yep. So the holding pot actually has money from both of them. And so they're going to take the money and divide it by two. So you got the $75 plus the $50. This is $125. And so if we divide that by two, this gets us 
62.50. Okay, so $62.50. Is given back to each player. Okay, so basically we can say that Megan, she's going to walk away. She really walks away with the TV, the couch, and technically the $75 she put in that holding pot, she got $62.50 back. So if we look at 75 minus that $62.50, she really only paid out $12.50. Yeah, paying Erica, she gets the stereo and the cat. She originally had to pay the pot $50, but she gets back $62.50. So she ends up with $62.50. That Megan was paying. Okay, so they and they both walk away with more than what they believe is their fair share. Okay, one more. So let's do it where we have more players, but less items. Okay, so you're in your dorm room with four other people and you didn't like the furniture and you guys got a couple of things, but now that it's the uh, end of the year is over and you need to, to split it up. And then you guys, when we were together, bought a desk and a vanity. And in the dorm room, we have Al, We have Brad, we have Chris, and Dawn. So they all go and they decide how much they believe the desk and the vanity is worth to them. And they put it in a piece of paper, seal it, and then they all come together. So Al believes the desk is worth $300. Brad says it's worth $280. Chris believes it's $260, where Donnie says $200. Al believes the vanity is $180. Brad says $120. Chris says $140. And Donnie says $100. So going through, you determine that the desk goes to Al. Because he gets the highest bid. Oh, and he also gets the vanity. 
So we want to figure out what everybody's fair share is. So let's first look at that. So their total, they believe each of the assets were. So Al believed both of them together were worth $480. Brad, worth both of them together, was worth $400. Chris is also worth $400. And Donnie, everything was worth $300. So fair share. So fair share, there's four people. Um, everything total to 480 for Al. So divide that by four, that he believes $120, that amount would be a fair share. Brad believes $100 is, Chris believes $100 is, and Donnie 300 divided by four. $75. Okay, so looking at what everybody gets. So for Al, he gets both the desk and the vanity. But that's an excess of uh, what he believes his fair share is. So he's going to have to pay the holding pot. Well, he got everything, which was worth $480 in his eyes. So he's going to have to pay out. His fair share was only $120. And so he's going to have to pay out. 360. Well, Brad, he didn't get anything. Well, he will get something, but he didn't get the desk or the vanity, and he's going to get $100. Chris. Al's walking away with the furniture, he's also going to get $100. And then Donnie, he's going to get $75. So let's look at extra in the holding pot. Well, originally, Al put $360 in that holding pot, but it had to pay out each of the other players. So it paid out Brad $100, plus Chris $100, plus Donnie $75. So $360 minus $275. I don't know where it went. Okay, let me see if I can erase this. There we go. So what does that give us? Uh, $15, $85. So we're going to need to split this 85 between the four people. That's $21.25. So each player receives
85 divided by four, which was $21. 21 cents. So let's see what technically everybody walks away with after the end of the year of living in the dorms together. So Al, technically he gets the desk, the vanity, he originally had to pay out $360, but he got that $21.25 back. So $360 that he paid out minus the $21.25, that's going to give him, he basically had to pay So it ends up in the end only paying $338.75. Brad, he's gonna get that $21.25 more. So he technically gets that $100, $121.25. Same thing with Chris. And Donnie gets 75 plus the 2125. So $96.25. cents. Okay, so that is the sealer bid method.